Have you ever wondered why do rivers look the way that they do? Why do they have the shapes and patterns that they do? In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about meandering rivers. And the goal of the video is to teach you how to make your own dissolutional meandering river. First of all, what is a meandering river? It's a river with winding curves or bends. Meandering rivers can occur in many places. The one shown in the image in Brazil, it's an alluvial meandering river. Alluvial refers to the fact that it has loose sediment like sand or gravel on its bed and banks. This river can change its path by eroding and depositing alluvium. Other examples of these types of rivers are the Mississippi River and the Amazon River. Meandering rivers are found in many places. This is the Colorado River near Escalante Plateau in Utah. It's a meandering river on bedrock. It can also change its path, but it takes a lot more time because the bed and walls of the channels are made of rock. Parts of the bed and walls of the channel may be chipped away when hit by stones moving with the flow. Here is another type of meandering river. This one is a meandering river on ice. Glacial meltwater channels at Root Glacier in Alaska. These rivers change their shape by melting the bed and the walls of the channel. They may be found on glaciers, but also on icebergs. They may also be seen anywhere that ice forms. The images shown here are for dissolutional meanders at the Burren in Ireland. They are meandering channels formed by flow-mediated limestone dissolution. If you don't know what dissolution is, take a cup full of tap water and add a spoonful of salt. Mix it thoroughly until all the salt grains disappear. Once the salt grains disappear, it means that they have been dissolved into the water. The rocks in the picture are formed of limestone which can be diluted under certain conditions. These conditions might lead to the formation of dissolutional meanders. This is meandering channels that form and change their shape by dissolving the bed they flow over and the walls that contain them. You can make your own dissolutional meandering channel. This video will show you how to do it. You will need a Marriott bottle and some water soluble material to make a slab. We will show you three different soluble materials that you can use. As for the Marriott bottle, you can find a link below this video that will teach you how to make a Marriott bottle. The basic setup for the experiments will be the following. You will need the Marriott bottle, the soluble material slab, and you'll need to come up with a way to set up the soluble material slab on an inclined plane. For this, you can use wood or foam board blocks. And in certain cases, you might need an inflow channel. It's not necessary, but if you need one, we used an aluminum C-section. The first option for the soluble slab is Play-Doh. You can make your own Play-Doh by following instructions available online, or you can buy any commercial brand. We do not endorse any specific product in this video. However, we show the brand of the product that we use for our tests. No matter what you get, just make sure that it's soluble in water. Sometimes it will say it is washable. If it can be washed with water, it means it is soluble. To make the slab, mold the Play-Doh. We used a small amount of Play-Doh and made a 3.5 by 5.5 by half inch slab. We then carved a small meandering channel into it. We used our finger to do it. We then set up the inflow channel upstream to run. The Marriott bottle was located around here and flow was going this way. We used a 50 milliliter a minute discharge for this lab and run it for almost 20 hours. This is a great experiment to run overnight or even for several days. Remember that most rivers never stop running. 
Here are some pictures of our meandering channel on Play-Doh after half an hour and after 19 hours. From these two images, you can tell that certain things have changed in time. To better understand the changes in geometry that happened, we took pictures from the top and then we made this schematic showing how the channel geometry changed. The black line shows how it looked like when it all started. The red lines show how it looked like after a few minutes, and the blue dashed lines show how it looked like after 19 hours. You can see how some of these meandering bends changed their shape and began to look very different from what they were the day before. Option two for the slab is to use a modeling material. We only tested this brand, but found others online. You can choose any other brand you like. Again, just make sure it is soluble in water. Mold the modeling material into an elongated slab. We used a 4 ounce bag and made a 2 by 10 by half an inch slab. Then you should carve a small channel into it. Instead of carving, what we did is that we used a 1 quarter of an inch round cable and pushed it into the modeling material following a meandering pattern. Then we colored the walls, banks, of the channel and the bottom, the bed of the channel using different color markers. We then set it up over an inclined plane. For this, we used the bottom of a cookie tray supported on wooden blocks. We ran a 50 milliliter per minute discharge for about half hour. After 10 minutes, some of the colored areas were beginning to fade indicating that water was dissolving material away from the bed and banks of the channel. Compare the image on the left before the run with the image on the right after 10 minutes running. And take a look at our simple setup. We have the Marriott bottle here on a wooden block. We have our inclined cookie tray and the soluble material slab with the channel on it. After 30 minutes, almost all of the initially black bed had been dissolved away by the flow. In certain parts of the channel, the red color on the banks had also been washed away by the flow. If you continue to run this longer, these bends will continue to dissolve away and change their shape in time. The third option for the channel is to use white school glue. We use this brand, but you can choose any brand you find at your local store or online. Again, just make sure that it is soluble in water. To use the glue, you'll need to find a container where you can pour the glue and let it dry. We used a 15 inch by 10 inch by half an inch cookie tray. We covered it with aluminum foil, which made things easier later on when we were trying to get the glue slab out of the cookie tray. We then poured enough glue to fill the container all the way to the top and then left it over a flat surface in a well-ventilated area. We had to let it rest for many days until all the water had evaporated and the glue slab was completely dry. When the glue slab was completely dry, we removed it from the cookie tray and got rid of the aluminum foil. We then set it up over the cookie tray using wooden blocks to make sure that we had a slope. And we set the Marriott bottle on top of a wooden block. We ran a 50 milliliter per minute discharge for one hour. In this case, we actually let the water choose what plant form shapes to take over the glue slab. We just let the water flow without carving an initial channel as we did before. We tested different slopes and with some of the slopes we got braided patterns rather than meandering, but eventually we found a slope condition that created the meandering pattern shown in the picture. We show here an example of a braided river in New Zealand. Not all rivers are meandering, some are braided and some tend to be straight. 
With these experiments, you can actually play with the amount of flow discharge and slope to obtain different kinds of rivers too. This video was recorded at the Vent Chow Hydro Systems Laboratory of the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. It was made thanks to funding provided by the U.S. National Science Foundation. And we also want to thank Morgan Goodwin, Jocelyn Dahm, and John Burns for their great help with trial runs and tests of soluble materials. Their efforts and contributions helped make this video possible. Thanks for watching.